Well, hi there, and welcome to episode 35 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D, and we have some treats today. My buddy uh, Laszlo Zabolix has found something very strange. Uh, I'm going to show it to you, and you make up your own mind what you think it is. I just call it a hat box. Hat box with a gun on it. But uh, who needs to defend a hot hat box? I mean, come on. And uh, we're going to take a dip into the archives and look at the classic Pathfinder Sphinx. Now, this was the only rover that they put really high definition cameras on. And they said, oh, that's a mistake. They see too much. And after that, we started getting downgraded products on the different NSLs. But that's another story. And then my friend Misa Dreschik has a uh, space technology and research on Facebook, otherwise known as STAR. And he has compiled the STAR archives, which are a wonderful, wonderful place to go browse around in. He's got anomalies from all over the solar system, and he's given me permission to go in and uh, uh, render 3D on a number of these items. So we're going to be taking a look at that. Uh, we're going to look at Eros, uh, the asteroid. We're going to look at a little bit of Mars, a little bit of the Moon. So uh, this one is a special edition. I think you'll enjoy it. I've talked enough. So let's go. As I mentioned a moment ago, our good buddy Laszlo has found yet another weird item in one of Neville Thompson's gigapans. The shape kind of reminded me of a hat box, one with a gun barrel mounted on top. Hang tight while I take my meds, and we'll zoom in just a bit. Okay, what do you make of this? It's way too symmetrical to be a rock. Whatever it is, looks like a manufactured item, especially with that gun barrel on top. I don't know, Laszlo. <laughs> you manage to keep me pretty well puzzled most of the time. Keep doing what you're doing, though. I love it. Before spirit, opportunity, and curiosity, there was Pathfinder. Now how is it that Pathfinder's cameras seem to be vastly superior to its descendants? It shot high-resolution stereo images that make spirit, opportunity, and curiosity's images look like the work of an old-time carnival photographer. As frustrating as that particular conundrum is, we decided to visit the famous Sphinx from Pathfinder's high-res stereo view of Twin Peaks Rock Garden and do a little 3D sleuthing. The master view gives an idea of Pathfinder's panoramic view in stereo. Look at the exquisite detail. And there, far, far away in the middle background indicated by the arrow, is the famous Sphinx. As we move in, we can see that the bulk of the Sphinx is taking shape as we gradually cut out all that extraneous material to the sides. As we go to hyper-zoom, we see that more details begin to emerge. The square building to the left has three symmetrical and evenly spaced bumps or spheres along the roof line. The shadow to the right of the third sphere, numbering from the left, is triangular, perhaps indicating that the structure isn't so much square as it is peaked, like an A-frame. While we don't see too much additional detail on the head, it appears even more symmetrical as it graces the top of the pyramid. The entire structure, or structures, lie partially hidden behind a low hill and interrupts the camera's lines of sight. Now in this one I've lightened it up considerably to hopefully reveal a little bit more detail. And as I talked about earlier, I think NASA regretted the clarity of these uh, artificial structures and other things being revealed in, in 3D, no less. So that's why I figure all subsequent missions had their photos released in low resolution, black and white, or hard to process 3D color with each camera shooting a different format to forestall the assemblage of crystal clear 3D images. 
And of course they added the infamous dust cover to every color image and started pasting in fake sand and often in the most blatant and amateurish way and released all color images in low res JPEGs. We poor earthlings are simply not ready to know what and who occupies this universe with us. And so NASA in its infinite wisdom and with our money, by the way, protects us from the knowledge that might not only traumatize us, but cause us to question the methods and agendas embarked upon by our government. And that is precisely why this work continues. As I mentioned earlier, longtime researcher and colleague Misha Drezik has the Star Archives on his uh, Facebook site. And man, these things offer up a real treasure trove of unusual anomalies. Misha is a longtime serious researcher whose Facebook site is a must join for anyone interested in space, technology, and research. That's what STAR stands for. Here's the thing though. Most of these images were added to the archive before it became standard operating procedure to provide citation for postings. That means I couldn't track down the original NASA images in most cases and had to use the images as is from the archive. Nowadays, it's considered very bad form to provide an image without citation. But I'm really glad Misha took the time years ago to squirrel away these findings because there is so much in his archives to make your jaw drop. So we're looking down at the asteroid Eros and right there in plain sight is a huge mining machine on the surface or maybe an imperial walker, I don't know. I think the mining assumption is valid as our studies have shown that our solar system's asteroids and moons, ours in particular, are worth trillions of dollars for the minerals they contain. Let's move in on this thing and rotate it a bit. Now I don't know whether this is a mining machine, a temporary habitat, or a full-fledged base of operations, but I think it's pretty safe to say that this is an artificial structure. It doesn't belong here, does it? Let's move on to another oddity found on Eros. Michael Ivey is another longtime researcher who has made some historic finds. The link on this one will take you to the original image where you'll be able to see this building or whatever it may be on the upper left horizon. Now I know the resolution is terrible, but even so, what the heck is this? It looks like a medieval castle to me, which is of course ridiculous. Everyone knows there are no feudal lords in space, right? Mike Singh is another highly respected researcher whose finds have almost always been classic ones. Mike disappeared from the scene a few years back. No one seems to know what happened to him, but he left behind some great finds for us to chew on. In this orbital image of our moon's Copernicus crater, we see what looks like a large direction finder type of antenna. Obviously, the magnification is maxed out, but the image is clear enough to see the antenna and the base upon which it's mounted. Frankly, when you get into moon anomalies, they can soon turn into a full-time avocation. Our moon is covered with clear signs of bases, of mining, roads, and, and much more. Mars is enough to keep me busy, but I wanted to share a couple of these from Misha Dresik's star archives. Here's another orbital image of the moon from the star archives that seems to show buildings and other constructions inside a crater. Pay attention to what's in the shadowed area. Just how do any of these structures form naturally within a crater that's the result of an explosive meteor impact? How about the meteor crater out in Winslow, Arizona? We don't see anything like this forming inside that crater, do we? nor do we see it in most of the craters on the moon. Our ability to ignore evidence when it's staring us right in the face is absolutely amazing. What's worse though, 
is a seeming utter lack of curiosity on our part to at least look into the existing evidence. Can you blame people for thinking perhaps there is a conspiracy of silence? I don't want to get into the weeds on conspiracy theories. I am just a curious citizen asking simple questions. Hey, thanks for stopping by and examining a little bit of the evidence with me. I hope you were able to see clearly in X3D. That's why I try to keep these videos short. I really appreciate you being with me. Thanks for your input and your comments. And this is your buddy Dave, over Mars X3D. Be well.